Hey English 2, I'm here in my dining room to check in with a few things that we have been covering. Okay, so we have been looking at uh, the organization of articles. So I showed you that fancy triangle and we looked at purpose and, and authors, ed, yeah, credibility <laughs> and um, the purpose and then we looked at how it broke down into ethos, pathos, and logos, how it affected the audience. And then I gave you two articles and I said, these authors are trying to persuade you of something, but they weren't clearly persuasive artic articles. So the first article I gave you was about TikTok. And a few of you dug around and found some things that could have been the author's thesis. Everything from um, TikTok is now starting to accept money or um, TikTok users have experienced depression. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Then the second article I gave you is the one you're working through today for Ethos Pathos Logos, which is I quit being a K-pop idol. And it's this lady's story about, um, you know, leaving England and, and becoming a potential idol, but it never tells us how she feels. In fact, she tells us that, uh, some of the things she learns have actually helped her grow her current business. So what have I done to you? Why have I given you such difficult articles? These articles have what we call an implied thesis. Okay, remember thesis is the argument how an author feels about a topic. In this case, literally the purpose. What is the author trying to persuade us? And implied means to, you know, impression. I give you lots of details I, and you put it together in your own head and you come to a decision. All right, so we have talked a little bit about propaganda. We've talked a little bit about advertising. Um, and both of these use implied techniques. So um, you think about a car commercial, okay? They all have this, this same shot, right? The car's driving and the camera kind of pans around the car and the car kind of goes up the hill, but the camera kind of pans around and it sees all the sides of the car. Um, and then um, it does these really close-ups of like the chair stitching or um, the leather on, on, the, on the steering wheel. And then it like coasts around, but you see all the edges of the car, okay? And then we always hear, you guys can hear the sound in your head, right? That, mm, they kind of do like that engine noise. And, and then there's like, um, there's always some kind of calm voice talking over. Or maybe it's a really happy voice, but they always kind of have those same information. Now, sometimes like a Subaru commercial will come out right blank and say, oh, we've won safety awards, but an implied thesis is more common. They'll do something like, um, okay, how about the Subaru commercial with the dogs? I'll actually post it here soon in case you don't know what I'm talking about, but there's always like this Labrador family and they go do things that humans would do in their Subaru, but they're dogs. And then the slogan is like, uh, love. It's what a Subaru is. And you're supposed to be like, oh, I love dogs because this is implied. I love dogs. Dogs love Subarus because look how much fun these labs are having. If I love dogs, I'll buy a Subaru. I know it's weird, but think about other things you see implied, like, um, any perfume or cologne advertisement. Okay. So there's always like, um, some music in the background. And then like, I'm thinking of one particular Dior ad. It's got Natalie Portman, the gal who played as Prince Queen Amidala. Those of you who don't actually know who that is. Um, it's Dr. Natalie Portman and she has a doctorate in like physics or microbiology. She's generally cooler than I am basically. Um, and she was Queen Amidala from Star Wars. Okay. So anyway, um, Queen Amidala, Natalie Portman's like running in a ball gown and there's like music in the background and there's like a car driving and she's like, what would you do for love? And it's selling perfume, but we put things together. We showed you an expensive car, a beautiful woman in a dress, um, really romantic situations. And if you wear this perfume, you're going to be that feminine or flip it around. There's that Johnny Depp commercial where he's like, takes some stuff off like a necklace in the desert. He puts it in a hole and then he like encants stuff. And then it's like a, a man's cologne commercial. If you wear that cologne, it's very manly. Implied thesis. Put a bunch of things together and you as the reader, the audience, draw your own conclusion. Okay, so let's look at K-pop commercial here, or uh, article. 
Okay. In it, she talks about all the stuff that happens. Like, mom doesn't want her to do it. She's got to leave the country to do it. Um, she's living on a, a very crazy existence where she has a crazy curfew and gets checked in on by a, an uncle type and, and she can't do this and she can't do that. And they work so hard that they fall asleep working, dancing. And then all of that comes together. And then they want her to pretend to be somebody she's not. And then she's going to debut as the visual, but only kind of not forced, but really should get plastic surgery. Okay. We line all that up. We are intelligent readers. And the moment someone starts taking away someone else's freedom, we're like, ooh, that's not a good situation. We start talking about people not being allowed to eat or only being, you know, their weight being bullied in front of the people. Like, ooh, that's not good. And then we start tallying and all those other things. We know that sleep is important. We know that free time is important. We know that weekends are important. We know that talking to your parents for more than 15 minutes or your friends or, or whomever for more than 15 minutes a day is important. So we put all that together and then we see someone's own identity being hidden and we figure it out. Eudeus is telling us that the K-pop world isn't right. It isn't ethical. It isn't good. And we can trust her from her credibility because she lived it for two years. She knows other people who debuted. In fact, she even points out some of the girls that were in the group she was supposed to be in aren't really the way they're presented publicly. Okay. We take all that information. We know it's a credible source. We know the audience, which is people who don't know anything about K-pop or maybe um, people who are curious about the industry. We take the speaker who's one of... of, of very clear credibility and, and information, her source information's first person. And we get the implied purpose. She wants to convince us that something's wrong with the K-pop industry. She doesn't tell us what she wants to do with it. Okay, now implied theses often do this. They never come out and are like, you should go vote for so-and-so or write to your K-pop industry right now and tell them to stop this. They're not gonna tell that. An implied thesis should leave us going, Man, and you should be thinking about the things they suggested. Maybe it's not K-pop. Maybe it's not TikTok fame fading. Maybe those don't interest you. But the idea should. Aristotle loved the implied thesis, which is why he helped us design the rhetorical analysis triangle, which is why I've taught it to you. Why do you need implied thesis? Long and short. It's advanced writing. Okay. As you're heading into college, those of you that are headed that direction, you need to stick with a very clearly defined thesis, but you're going to read a lot of things that have implied theses, and you're going to be gathering information from multiple sources and coming to your own conclusions. By doing this in a smaller work, a single article, I'm trying to provide you the skills to be able to pull multiple viewpoints and make a decision for yourself. It's basically just problem solving and critical thinking. See? It's good. Okay, discussion post. Um, that's the next thing you're going to do. Then you've got uh, ethos, logos, and pathos for the K-pop article. And that's my dog barking, so I'm going to go see if she's treed a raccoon again. You're the best. See you soon. Bye.